You make a bunch of noise out here, so they have peace and quiet in here. Because there's no better sound than the squeak-free guarantee from Advantech Subflooring and Advantech Subfloor Adhesive. Everybody, let's uh, let's just say if you had a hard time making it here, raise your hand real quick just so that everybody can get that off their chest. Are you talking Uber booth or to Vegas? To Vegas. Oh. Yeah, hopefully you didn't have a hard time finding the booth I thought you here. Meant to six to seven years old. <laughs> Peter has a hard time making it anywhere. Just to... for those of you that don't know us, we're gonna introduce ourselves and we'll let uh, age go first. <laughs> Peter Yost. I have a company called Loading Light. Into the market. And uh, I've been putting up with Steve for 22 years. Steve, would you like to introduce yourself next? Yeah, Steve Basic, architect. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those videos. But uh, yeah, friends with Peter Ghost for probably longer than he can count these days. And uh, good friends with uh, Jake Bruin. We just do a lot of buildings together, and uh, we're here with our Hugo family. Chris, I'm going to let you go next. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chris Vegas, I'm the Technology Director for Innovation here at Huber Engineered Woods. Been with the company about 14 and a half years, and uh, happy to be here with you guys. So in other words, if you see Chris handing out business cards, stick your hand out and get one, because they have a cell phone number on them. <laughs> Chris, Chris is the guy you call, like, hey, I got this crazy idea. I wonder if it'll work. I'll call Chris and find out. And I'm Jake Bruton. Uh, I'm a builder in Columbia, Missouri, in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my company's name is Arrow Building. And the three of us are the podcast. If you don't normally listen, Chris is our, uh, our host today for, uh, for being in the booth and being charged with answering all, three, all things Huber questions. Uh, but I thought that because this is day one, first thing in the morning at IBS, the thing that I want to talk about most is what are you looking forward to the show? Why are you here? What's the thing that you're going to see while you're here that you're looking forward to? Does somebody want to go first? I'll go first, Jake, because you're looking right at me. Uh, so I've been, I do a lot of product testing trying to do stuff like that's actually happening in the field. And I have a couple of projects where I'm having trouble with window weak systems. So I'm going to be doing some research on how windows get rid of water. So in other words, if you have Peter's cell phone, if you have his, if you have his number, every time you see a window that has weeps in it today, you text him a picture of that window with weeps because it's trying to gain better understanding of why we're failing on that part of our industry. So the cell phone is the... Yes, the, the mobile eye telephone, as you call it. <laughs> Steve, do you want to... What, what are you looking forward to this week? What am I looking forward to this year? Uh, actually, there's a, a bunch of uh, companies have reached out with some new products. I probably want to go check it out and see how we can incorporate those in. But the most important thing for me about the show is getting to meet a lot of people that we have. You know, we have relationships on social media. People text me all the time, message me, and say, hey, I got a question and stuff. And I would ask them if they want to IBS. They say, yeah. I say, well, make sure you come up and introduce yourself. So I get to meet them. We probably met half a dozen builders already this morning. Or even people that you end up working with remotely or digitally yeah. that you never see. I see Fred Malik turning and walking. I haven't met Fred in person before, but we've spoken multiple times on the computer. So that sort of thing happens here. That's a that's a huge one for me every year, getting to see people that I only see at things like this, yeah, we, even if it's Chris. We have like three or four clients that came out to the show that want to walk around and see some stuff and see it firsthand. So. Okay, we're going to pretend as if nobody is listening to this. Nobody can hear this. When a client tells you that they're coming here, do you go, oh, am I going to have to walk around with those people? No, I say, oh, that's great. I'm just understand I'm really, really busy <laughs> out there. I might maybe just squeeze an hour in on Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Well, just to place a little context, the first time I met you was here at IBS, and I think that you conceived of Unbuilt Podcast one of the years we came to IBS. Uh, I think that might be accurate, yeah. I, I, I remember when I met you, you were standing next to Mike Gurdon. I was like, who's that guy standing next to Mike Gurdon? 
And what, why is he here? Yeah, why is this guy? Saying, I remember Peter asking me, like, why did you bring that guy? I could see that. <laughs> can, can we start off by asking Chris how he got into the... Wait, I want to I want to say what I'm excited about. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm excited about stumbling upon something I didn't know existed. I feel like every time I come to IBS, I walk past the booth and I go, wait, hold on. And I turn and go oh, back. Zip shooting. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's surprising the number of products that, especially in my central Missouri market, just don't exist for our dealers. But it's surprising the number that you don't catch if you don't come to something like this. Be it that, you know, the vacuum system for doing dirty laundry, like that kind of stuff. You're not going to see a display of that at your local home show, most likely, unless you're in Boston or, or Austin, Texas or something, you know. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for me to discover things that I didn't know existed. And then we were going to let Chris tell us how he wound up here. Yeah, because one, one of the reasons that the three of us... It's like called working, short straw, by the way. Okay, that's the third fair, time we've got to talk to Patrick <laughs> the, the, One of the reasons we like working with you, is the tech company. You know, because the companies that rise to shine are those that invest those resources in product development and research. So, with that, Chris, tell us how you got the honor of being part of the R&D team for you. Definitely an honor uh, to be a part of the R&D team with you, Bert, and uh, an honor to be here with you all. I understand I'm in the presence of greatness with uh, the podcast being in the top 5% of all globally. So uh, congratulations on that for sure. Um, I would say how I got to be a part of research and development. You know, this is the first real job I've ever had. Uh, I spent eight and a half years in the army after college, and I uh, had to find a a real a real job. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. I appreciate. He does it. know that Jake hates the military. <laughs> Jake does hate the military. Not and the top gun. <laughs> I'm no Steve longer. Steve thinks fan. those are one and the same. Just if you don't if you don't like Top Gun, he thinks you don't like the military. That's how much he likes Top Gun. So I uh, <clears throat> I came on with Huber, I think, really because I realized that how much of a a family-oriented company. It was a family-oriented atmosphere, a very heavy-owned teamwork. Yes, family-owned, six generation now. But even you know, in a production facility, just like it, it felt like the camaraderie that I had when I was in the military, and it felt like home to me. Uh, so I did that for a few years and was lucky enough to uh, to land a job in research and development, supporting our Advantech flooring product line. Uh, did that for about six years and and found the same camaraderie that you know we have in uh, in our mills in our research and development team and quite honestly throughout the business uh, from the top down it's just a, a tip top organization that really cares about their employees our customers and want to make sure we do right by them for sure so you came up through the ranks you worked in operations first and then went into R&D yes sir and that's one of the things I like about a large part of the Cooper development team is they, they, they spent time in the manufacturing part of the business, which is, it makes your research much more grounded in the actual problems the builders face. Yeah, and there's multiple parts of your team that came from the mill, came from the production side that now work in your sure. department. I think it gives you a good breadth of experiences, you know, different perspectives. And it's a good balance of kind of a you know cross-functional and just really, you know, we're all creatures of where we've been and the things that we've experienced. And I think the you know the the broad experiences that we have across whether it's operations, research and development, sales and marketing, really uh, it helps us succeed for sure. And it's almost like your sales and marketing team is also in the education business. Like, and I always equate you guys to some other manufacturers like Schluter, where it's like. If I educate you on the right way to use my product, we're making a product that's going to work if you install it the way we tell you to. It's as simple as we know the investment there. Like, you guys are our sponsor. You asked us to be in the booth and do a podcast. We like working with the products that you have. We use them. But the ability to access the information, to understand what you're doing, how to install it, the support, if I have a question, those sort of things, they make it easier for us to be here. And I think that that's... That shows on the R&D side, too, because you guys understand that we're going to have to actually install it. It's not just does it work, it's can it work for, you know. And every every application can be different. Um, there are, you know, small subtleties that can change from 
from home to home or project to project. And uh, we definitely pride ourselves on being available and uh, ready to answer. If we can't get you an answer on the phone, we'll get an answer and get back to you as soon as humanly possible. And I think that's something that we as an organization um, really pride ourselves on. We, we want our customers, you know, our partners that we work with to know and trust that uh, we're going to figure it out for them. So I want to talk about like the three newest things in your guys' booth. And maybe I'm wrong that they're not the three newest, but the three newest from my perspective. <laughs> Uh, one is the white panel, the Exacor panel. Uh -huh. uh, two is the peel and stick membrane that I believe was in the booth last year too. So was Exacor, but they're still the newest. Right. And then we can roll into number three that we were just holding and touching in, in a second. So walk us through just the like 30 seconds on what Exacor is and, and the peel and stick membrane too. Sure. Uh... Exacore is a uh, it's a magnesium oxide based structural panel. Uh, thing that probably the biggest play we see with it right now is a uh, is a half inch flooring underlayment that would compete with your wet laid gypsums and a lot of your multifamily construction projects. Um, so it's a sound attenuation <laughs> product in that install. It, it it would use as a sound attenuation product that uh, performs very well acoustically. Um, anybody knows, you know, uh, an acoustical assembly is exactly that. It's not just one product that makes it. You know, it, it's a conglomeration of all things as a part of it. But the uh, Exacore underlayment does a great job of, uh, especially with your uh, your IIC uh, values. Really, really solid performing product there. And then with the roofing underlayment, um, you know, we're we're always big on uh, performance. And, and guarantees and warranties, et cetera. And, uh, you know, if there's anything we want to do is ensure that, you know, the homes that we build are more resilient, um, can stand up to mother nature. Uh, and I think this peel and stick roofing underlayment is just another kind of belt and suspenders approach that we can have. It gives you that zip roof leak free guarantee as well. Um, and it was kind of a quick elevator pitch. I think. It was kind of my understanding that like the, uh, the underlayment too, that kind of came out of some uh, marketplace demand. Like people were asking, like, do you guys make one of these? Do you make one of these? You know, we would like to put this underneath this. And it's like, you guys kind of listened and we're like, yeah, okay, we'll figure that out. Sure. I think we, we, you know, as I said, we pride ourselves on our technical service, but we also pride ourselves on being in constant contact with uh, our customers. And uh, we want to have that open line of communication and always knowing what unmet needs they might have and how we as an organization can better meet those. And uh, I think, you know, that's a product of it, for sure. So I, I think what's kind of cool is that Huber is one of the few companies that understands that if you make a system of products and you warranty them all as factors, what a great marketing plan. Like, hey, if you use all these systems and integrate them, like we have as manufacturers, then that's the way that you get the highest performance. So it's kind of neat that the technical solution is also a marketing solution. Um, now, if you do that and you don't do the technical research, you're going to end up way out on a limb. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think even before Humboldt Crossroads, which Steve was the originator of the humor, was doing my wing nut testing on pressure sensitive adhesive tapes where you guys were the first to say, hey, the lab tests don't give us the full story. And when we came to you and thought we were to hear from you as lawyers, we didn't. We heard from the R&D group about, hey, yeah, you should be doing this kind of thing. Steve, do you want to? Oh, I was just going to make a suggestion for the group. I think on the hour, you guys should have the front end loader <laughs> doing, doing a drop of water on that. We'll work that way. <laughs> Do you want to walk us through the third product that you and Peter and I were standing over there playing with? Yeah, so well, I want to take any mint out of the. Uh, well, I do want to take a mint yeah, out you of your sales, so <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, yeah, new rain screen product, right? Yes, Coming sir. Through, and uh, we're, uh, we're actually going to be putting it on one of our projects here really soon. And uh, yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm with Peter. I think. You know, companies that are willing to take the responsibility of the assembly rather than a component 
is a great direction to be moving. Because you get to control a lot more. Like you get to make your wall even more successful if you give a reason to be more successful, like a rain screen system problem or a membrane problem. So you know, thinking of what are those next components, next pieces to the assembly that we can bring under our umbrella just makes us trust your products that much more. Sure, and I think you know, from a builder's perspective, you know, the more products you're buying from one um, supplier or one company, it's one less neck for you to choke, right? Um, you know, you, you rely on that 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 company, that organization, to, to help you be successful. It's definitely a headache producer because if if we're using your zip sheathing and then we put somebody else's membrane on there, every time we talk to somebody, it's never going to be their fault. Yeah. But now that you guys have taken responsibility, uh, now you just got to get some metal roofing, some shingles, yep. um, and some roof trust manufacturing, and then you guys will well, use all the answers. We'll, we'll put that on the list. <laughs> and if you look at their family. You mean you can't just leave it like that? Because in New England, I'd say 50%. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't we'll say New England. In Vermont, that's considered a finished roof for at least about six years. Well, you guys, when, when you were in Columbia, we're, we're about to, Steve and I are about to start a house. No, in Columbia, they put a blue tarp over. Yeah, they do. <laughs> there, we're about to start a house that is next to a house that was built in 2012 that never got siding on the eastern face. And it's 36 or 37 feet tall, and it just has the green board and tape on it. And I've been inside, and there's no water damage inside. I remember we went to yeah. the project together. That was awesome. So maybe in my market, it's, <laughs> it's the finished Thing. So I think the interesting thing from a like family of products standpoint with the rain screen, I think it's great because why not relieve the pressure off of the wall where, you know, that solves lots of problems like we were just talking about. However, I think the interesting thing is it's the only product that you guys are making that promotes drying if it's solved properly. Everything else kind of manages for water, but not after it's already wet. And, it, and I thought that was like, a, oh, it's a different family of products all of a sudden. Well, I think you do have uh, you know some enhanced drainage with the uh, the face of the zip with the dimple imprint, uh, but this definitely does promote more drying efficiency. And I think that's you know if there's one thing we want to focus our, our efforts on is resiliency of the of the the home. And I think this is just you know you have the peel and stick on the lemon for the roof. I think this helps to to help with the uh, drainage efficiency and the drying for the wall planning system. So. How soon will builders be able to get a hold of the new uh, reveal system? As of right now, we think uh, spring. Springtime, it should be available. Um, I think this year? Yes. Okay. Is that a shot? I know you're in technical and not marketing, but it could have been spring at any point. Okay. That felt like I was shot across the valley. Right? <laughs> um, I got your back, Thank you, sir. They, they, those two guys try to beat up on me all the time. We, I found the Marines, that's right. Um, I told Chris I was going to be gentle. <laughs> so I think uh, spring of this year, and uh, the target is any place where you can buy a zip, we should be able to um, purchase the rain screen material. Okay. So I thought it would be uh, amusing if I sprung a question on you guys. I want to know uh, your favorite IBS experience over the years. Are, you want, you, you really want that? Yeah, sure. Wow. It, non vulgar. It is on the podcast. Don't be vulgar. <laughs> My first year at IBS was 1993. I was 10. Yeah. <laughs> I'll maybe forget my story. Rose. <laughs> Rose. Rose. We, we went for a drive out to Red Rocks. We came back to the casino. There was only one parking spot we could find. And as we were trying to pull in, this guy came in a Cadillac and got right in front of us. And I was angry, so I went up to my free park and I said, you can see we were waiting for that parking spot. And he said, yeah, I said, you're going to lose your shirt tonight. I'm going to tell you, it took three guys to hold him back from coming after me. But he got the parking spot, but I spoiled his gamble. <laughs> my favorite story. Peter's in it for the long game. <laughs> wow. He wants to make sure he's ruining lives, not just parking spots. <laughs> Don't take my parking spot. I like the fact that that was what you went to as your favorite IBS memory, too. Screw that guy. I hope he lost. What about you, Steve? <laughs> Me? Um, 
I remember being in the bathroom and Norman Abrams came up and stood next to me. So, I remember walking out there texting my wife and he was Norman Abrams. Okay. Now, the yeah, story you had. I said you did. Yeah, she said hello to you. I think uh, my favorite was right after Steve and I became friends. He was like, are you going to the Builder Show? And I was like, I don't know what that is. He was like, yeah, the, the International Builder Show. And I was like, Steve, I don't know what that is. And he was like, IBS. And I was like, all you're doing is saying the same words. You have to choose more words to make me understand. And then he you thought it was irritable bowel syndrome? And so I was, I was confused. I, I was like, oh, is it in Boston? What is it? And then he sent me a link so that I could do my own research. And I decided to go like last minute. And like the first morning I was walking in here, my phone rang. So he's like, where are you? And I was like, he knew I was coming. And he was nice enough to invite me to tag along the first day. And it was like, it was way less intimidating. So that you was- realize that's how hard it is for him to get friends. Yes, it is. Uh, I have hard to tell. That's what Mike Norton no. also said. Why don't you bring this guy? This guy? <laughs> Who is this guy? He's got client, paying clients. That's why I was with him. But I think that that's like the beautiful thing here is the, the like we were talking about earlier, the, the, the community that is here. If you choose to participate, if you came here by yourself today, find somebody to walk around with. Find somebody to point at stuff in a booth and go, that's stupid. Why would you do that? So that they can go, oh, no, that's great. You should do it that way. So, so you got to beat all that? No, I, I don't think, think I can beat that. Down the aisle, look up and go, oh, my God. And just see how many people will stop and stare up at the roof. Look, I, I want to piggyback on yours because I'm going to change my story. <laughs> Last year uh, was probably my favorite year at IBS. I love all you guys, but uh, Last year, I got to introduce my daughter, who works with me, to my world. Who didn't team bother to stay and watch us. No, she, she's here somewhere. <laughs> she's hiding because she won't she won't show her face. But, but as a dad, and having my daughter follow in my footsteps as an architect and working with me, it was like the greatest joy to say, "This is the world I live in." And get to share it with her. Well, and you get to come here and people want to say, hi, Steve Basic, I'm the nice, and then you get to do that in front of your kids. That's kind of cool, too. It makes you feel like a superhero sometimes. Chris, do you have a favorite IBS memory that doesn't involve bathrooms or ruining people's gambling? <laughs> and you can't use the fact that you're up here with us. That was it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that I would have one in particular. I think just, I think being here... Uh, Especially now, after the last you know a couple of three years where things have been pretty pretty tough and you've not been able to be around people, there are a lot of uh, familiar faces that you get to see again. You know whether it's inside of Huber or or customers or partners that we've worked with in the past. I think that uh, just being able to continue to build upon those relationships and, and and be together again, I think is meaningful to me, and I really enjoy that. It's fairly poetic, actually. <laughs> After all the Norm Abrams bathroom talk that started that <laughs> off. Just Mr. Yankee Workshop, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you are listening to this, IBS has come and gone, so the next little section of advice is not going to apply to you until you decide to come next year. Huber's booth has stuff going on all day, all three days. There's people that you might know stopping in and talking. There's family feud with the Euler brothers. There's building science trivia tomorrow. Which I think is, I can take them. Oh, it's not that kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you can take both of them at the same time. Did you understand that? Feasible exercise. Did you understand I wrote the building science trivia quiz questions? Then you just the 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 I can. That's right. Steve's a little sore because he lost at building science trivia last year. I recall. Year. I remember it. I it was quite it. nice. I still look at the pictures from it every day. I you it. It's my motivation. My wife said, Would you let you feel it? <laughs> We're going to do another podcast here Thursday, kind of wrapping up the show first thing, 9 a.m. We'll be the first ones going. Come and say hi again. Uh, don't hesitate to say hello to people when you see them. Everybody that you know from online is just a person, and they will probably stop and talk to you, whether it's Mark Willie or if it's, I see Sean Santa Moore standing out there. I saw Ben Morton walk by a minute ago. Say hi to these people. They're just people, and they like talking about building, too. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Uh, if you are listening to the podcast, subscribe, do all the stuff, follow us on YouTube. 
Uh, I just want to say thanks to Hubert for having us up here today, and thanks for Chris for dealing with we need somebody to talk with us. And <laughs> Thank you for having there. me. We definitely appreciate you guys being here with us for sure. Final words, Pete? Always a pleasure. Uh, always a pleasure. Okay, thank you guys for, for standing here and hanging out with us. We'll, uh, we'll see you Thursday morning.